coming our session. Just to checking if it's work. <laughs> yes, it's not working. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mehman. Uh, I'm the member of the uh, Affiliations Committee of the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, the Affiliations Committee is the Wikimedia Community Run Committee, interesting with um, advising the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees to approve new uh, affiliates in the moment. Uh, this includes the user groups, uh, chapters, and thematic organizations. And on this uh, screen, you are now watching the members and advisors uh, of the Affiliations Committee. Yeah, uh, just about a little bit about the purpose of the Affiliations Committee. Uh, uh, like we are uh, interested to uh, check how uh, affiliate, uh, how the affiliates uh, in our moment was recognized or derecognized. We are managing the conflicts uh, within the affiliates and also uh, like helping the affiliates on the capacity building. And of course, uh, we are like uh, contributing the moment. Currently, we uh, we have nine uh, voting members in the affiliations committee and six advisors. Some of the advisors are here with us today, and some of the members too. Uh, and the affiliations committee have. Tr uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just a uh, little bit confused with that system. <laughs> it's not looks like uh, on the, like online. So uh, affiliation subcommittee uh, affiliation committee has three uh, subcommittees, uh, including uh, conflict management. Uh, this run by the conflict uh, by the members of the affiliation committee who are the member of the conflict sub uh, subcommittees. Uh, we are just like dealing uh, with the. Uh, conflicts inside of the moment and uh, inside of the affiliates and helping them to uh, like fix the issues in the moment. And plus, uh, we have mediation program in, inside of the conflict management system, uh, which helps the moment uh, to be more uh, healthy, to, to stay more healthy. Uh, affiliation recognition subcommittee, it's uh, where I am the member and uh, we, uh, our purpose is to review the application for the user groups, uh, approve them, uh, also uh, review the chapters application, but uh, chapters are not recognized by the affiliations committee. It's fully up to the board of trustees to recognize uh, chapters, but we are giving the recommendation, our recommendation to the board of trustees to recognize them. Uh, that includes also thematic organizations. And AFCOM created a new subcommittee uh, for communication this year. Uh, it's aimed to en like en at enhance transparency, uh, improving the information flow, uh, and fostering stronger engagement within the affiliates and broader Wikimedia community. Uh, this subcommittee will focus uh, on uh, streamlining the communication process, uh, ensuring timely updates uh, from the newsletter, uh, and uh, they will explore how to uh, use the social media for this uh, purpose. Uh, and uh, recently we restructured our newsletter. Uh, and now it includes uh, more highlights about quarterly affiliates status report and also AFCOM workflow and scope of work. And about a little bit about the uh, affiliate strategy. As you know, in this June, uh, Board of Trustees realized uh, announcement about the uh, affiliate health criteria and uh, a small changes in the user group uh, recognition process. Uh, and now uh, the support staff of Efficiency Committee is working uh, to implement, uh, like uh, working on plan to implement these two changes in our processes. And we expecting that new affiliate health criteria uh, to be live uh, by the end of this month. And uh, also during these changes, we paused the recognition process, uh, which start from the June 12th. And uh, we expect that we will done all, like, all things by the end of the September, and we will resume uh, the recognition process uh, at the end of the uh, September. 
and a little bit about how the uh, user group recognition process is working. Um, there are like uh, simple criteria for the applicants uh, that they need to um, met. Uh, and also there are extensive parts of the review process which was run by the affiliations committee. Like we are checking how your mission is aligned with the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, about compli uh, compliance with the naming guidelines of the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, how your information is public on MetaWiki, uh, about your plans, uh, and if you are allow new members uh, to the, your user group, and uh, we need like to design a contact person from your affiliates to us. And also we are checking the overlapping issues uh, because uh, you need to be all regional based uh, user group or, a, or thematic based user group because uh, we need to check if in your region there are any other affiliates who is working and we don't want to like uh, mix the issues in your region. Uh, same applies for the thematic too. And uh, at the end, uh, AFCOMS reviews this, your application, votes, uh, and if it's in favor, so you are recognized. Uh, there is uh, some changes, as I mentioned, after the strategy process in the uh, user group recognition. Uh, you can uh, check this all on MetaWiki, it exists, but uh, ju I just want to share that there will be uh, now interview process with the applicants uh, and also some changes in the uh, how you need to work. And also there will be trial period for one year uh, for, a f for new user groups. About the chapter uh, recognition process, it's already done by the uh, Affiliations Committee, but I as mentioned before that uh, we are just giving the recommendation to the Board of Trustees, but mm, we are not recognizing the chapters of thematic organization. It, it's up to the bo Board of Trustees. Uh, what you need to do uh, like for, for uh, to be recognized an affiliation, you need to submit bylaw for us. And uh, I want to share that uh, Affiliations Committee two years ago uh, developed the uh, bylaw review guidelines and also bylaw recommendation for the affiliates. Uh, you can use these resources to uh, prepare your new bylaw for chapter. Uh, and then you need to submit this uh, bylaw uh, first for uh, affiliation committee. We will review, give you some advices or some recommendations or uh, we'll highlight what the issue is in your bylaw. Uh, after the bylaw review done, you need to submit the criteria application. For the uh, Wikimedia, uh, for the affiliation committee, we'll review. Also, we'll give you some advices, and if it, there will be any questions, of course, we will send these questions through the email. And at, at the end, uh, affiliation committee will adopt the resolution on the recommendation for the board of trustees, and uh, then this goes to the board of trustees to be recognized or not your new chapter. Uh, yeah. There is QR code uh, to the bylaw guidelines. You can scan it and uh, acknowledge yourself about this process. Do you need a time? I guess no. Oh, yes. No. Uh, about the conflict sites, uh, I'm not a member of the conflict subcommittee, but uh, I'll share how it works. Uh, like, uh, this is the very busy uh, subcommittee within the affiliations, uh, within the committee. Uh, like problems or issues, it's come to the AFCOM through the emails, what they received, and then we start internal review. During the internal review, first we assess if this on the scope of affiliations committee, because sometimes the conflicts, uh, it's not in the scope of the affiliations committee, and we are giving the advice for applicants to uh, apply different departments at the Wikimedia Foundation, for example, trust and safety or the legal department, uh, because uh, we are working with our guide, uh, with our charter and our charter is defined what our scope and what's not and if there is like no scope for us uh, we're just giving you advice to work from with the different department at the Wikimedia Foundation uh, if it's in our scope we are starting in with investigation process uh, after that we have the like some discussion with the applicants also with the parties who are involved in these let's say issues and if there is like chance to uh, agree on something, uh, we are giving the mediation to the parties. And uh, at the end, then 
issue was fixed. Uh, we are signing the agreement with the parties and we are closing the case. There is compliance and monitoring for the uh, all uh, affiliates. It includes the user groups, uh, the chapters, the thematic organization. It's mainly uh, managed by the staff of the like uh, staff support of the aff affiliations committee. Uh, what you need to know is just that if you are the affiliates, you need to submit once per year uh, activity report for us. Uh, if you are chapters, you also need to uh, submit the uh, financial statement for us uh, and basically that's it uh, about the due recognition process uh, like if you are not submitting any report for one year we are giving you like notice and it's continuous around the year so after that you have one year to submit a uh, report we are just not recognized uh, quickly And this is the FH health cr criteria. As I said, uh, Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees uh, like published the plan uh, about strategy, and this is the part of the strategy. We have extensive interview processes with all parties, including the foundation staff, uh, the uh, people from the community, uh, with the affiliates, and we'll develop this health criteria with them. And. Uh, Affiliations Committee already passed the resolution and we approved these all criteria. You can uh, check this on MetaWiki. And how we work internally as an Affiliations Committee, we have monthly uh, AFCOM call for two hours uh, where we uh, checking all the updates and agreeing as a committee on some cases and have a discussion with uh, about the current issues. There are officers uh, meeting. The officers is like... Uh, extensive body in the affiliation committee who manage uh, main issues. Uh, there are chair of the affiliations committee, vice chair, and secretary who the officers of the affiliations committee. Uh, we have subcommittee uh, calls, uh, one per month for the recognition, for the conflicts, and also for the communication, but they doing their work asynchronously. There are office hours and uh, community members can join these uh, office hours if they want and ask the question to the uh, affiliations committee. And it's also used by the uh, AFCOM uh, like to agree on something if they have no time to join uh, monthly call. Uh, and if there is any special request from the community, of course we are ready to meet that, met them and uh, talk with them. And there is quarterly affiliate reports. It's uh, integrated in the newsletter. You can check it on our newsletter, what happens in AFCOM and uh, in the moment from the AFCOM site. And we have annual strategic meeting. It happens like once per two year. Uh, we have our last uh, strategic meeting in uh, June 2022 in Paris. And next one is expected to be held on uh, November this year. And stay connected with us. Uh, our email is afcom at wikimedia.org. Uh, you can find us on MetaWiki, uh, on social media like Facebook and Instagram too, but it's not very active, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, and if you want to ask me questions or ask the com uh, committee co questions, we are ready to uh, answer them. And we will be happy to answer them. Yes, just to add to what uh, Mehman has said, uh, we are happy to talk about the general process of AFCOM, but we will refrain from talking about specific of any particular case. Yes, because we signed NDA and we can't share the... Yeah, the and it's not really moral as well. So happy to answer any of your questions. Um, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, <coughs> yeah, what is the process for someone to become a member of the Affiliates Committee? And um, how long does that tenure last? And also, what's the process for someone to become an advisor to the Affiliates Committee? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, well, we'll change this process, but I'll uh, tell you about current process, how it works. 
uh, like uh, we are announcing the election selection process to the AFCOM uh, once per year. It's mainly happening in Dece like between October December. Uh, if you want to become the ma voting member of the Federations Committee, you just need uh, like follow the emails from us. Uh, we are announcing it's around October. Uh, previously, it's managed by the AFCOM, but uh, then we uh, like realized that very ex it's very extensive work, and uh, we can't manage ev everything in, at the same time. Now it's up to the staff support from the Wikimedia Foundation. They are like uh, running this process of election. You need to f uh, fill uh, the application form for us, uh, and uh, we are asking you uh, you want to be like the the member of the affiliation uh, for the recognition subcommittee or the conflict uh, side. Uh, you need to choose one of the subcommittees. Uh, and then um, we can, like affiliation committee internally reviews uh, your application together with the board of trustees and staff support. And uh, we're just voting will become the next voting member. But also we are uh, giving the like chance to all like good candidates to be also the advisors of the affiliations committee. And advisors, uh, like, they're in the process because we changed the process for ad advisors too. Now they are more engaged with the affiliations committee and with the community. So you're just acting like a member, but without the right on vote for resolutions. There is nothing like very special difference between the advisors and the voting members. Uh, yeah, that's a general process, uh, but yeah, just wait. Maybe we can change some process in the election after the our search, but it's up to the committee. Okay. Yeah, Who? Minute, please what? Um, like the tenure, Ten. how long is the term? Please. Ah, uh, the term for oh, the no voting member is three year. Uh, previously it was two, uh, but uh, we applied some changes in our charter. Now it's three years, and for the voting member is one year. Oh, advice, sorry, one year. Uh, I have a question about the criteria for the affiliates because there is uh, the, this ongoing proposal for having something more than just the report that we were mentioning before. I wonder whether you can elaborate also on that part because you were just mentioning a couple of reports per year, but uh, there will be more criteria to, for the affiliates to be considered uh, good affiliates and so on. Yeah, uh, well, uh, we changed uh, the criteria for the recognition uh, very recently after the strategy process. Uh, now there are, yeah, there are more uh, like requirement for you from your side. But, uh, you know, uh, previously we are just recognizing all affiliates uh, with minimal criteria and we see that it's not working well because after the recognition, some affiliates works well, uh, they are very active, but some of them just even not submitting the report. And now we want to make this more healthy for the uh, moment, because we don't want to just uh, increase the number of the affiliates. We want to increase, but with the, like, mm, how would say, because, yeah. You want to add some? Uh, yeah, and health criteria. It's for the existing uh, affiliates. We want to improve their skills and their experience too. That's why uh, we are applying uh, the health criteria for review. And uh, we'll assist this with that criteria. But of course, we'll provide more information after the, uh, we've done the implementation plan with the new process. But yes, because basically what I saw is that uh, the criteria are there, but there is not any real numeric threshold. So it's hard to understand uh, which are the level that are considered to be good or insane to the, in the process. This is uh, a little bit puzzling so far. Mm. Uh, uh, I, I think Natalia wants to directly answer that question. Uh, yeah, so the thing is that we are not thinking of having more reports than needed. There would be still one report. We are now figuring out how we can make it one report where there would be also included the criteria. Uh, you might be confused about that because we tried to make the process very slow 
and try to, to not rush. So we have the criteria published, but we do not have yet the reporting changed or, you know, the forms or, or like requests uh, on affiliates. The change that is like imminent imin is uh, happening with the uh, new affiliates. We are going to uh, request them for some kind of like a test period or like a track, uh, track record before they are recognized. So for new affiliates, the changes are more fundamental than for the existing affiliates. So existing affiliates at the moment, like we, we just want it to be healthy, <laughs> but there are no uh, requirements coming right now to existing affiliates. Yeah, I just want to also quickly answer, uh, like add uh, something to this. Uh, we are simplifying that process. For example, currently you need to like submit two reports, one for the community resource team via Flux system and one general for the AFCOM. But uh, after this, uh, you'll be required just uh, submit one report, combine one. This will be applied for the community resource team and for the AFCOM too. Here's a question. Uh, hi, thanks. Thank you for the lecture. Um, I, would, I would like to ask, uh, when there was a diagram when you, uh, uh, when you had a case, uh, just, just at the start, okay, th this, uh, when you have uh, the case and you have the awareness, internal review, conversation, and the final step was agreement, what if, uh, what if you cannot, uh, cannot agree with something? What, 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 what if the agreement is not possible? What happens then? Uh, well, I guess I should have more uh, information about this because it's up to complex subcommit. Hi. Uh, so, I'll uh, start. My name is Maciej Nedzikiewicz, and I'm. Uh, my name is Maciej Nedzikiewicz. I'm also a member of AFCOM and a member of Conflict Resolution Committee. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that uh, the goal is always to reach an agreement. <laughs> yes, uh, but some, so, sometimes needs stressing. Uh, either with the affiliate leadership, with the affiliate staff, or with the affiliate as a whole. Uh, one example uh, from the recent past that I can mention of what happened when the agreement wasn't met is uh, the case of an affiliate in our region. In 2021, uh, uh, I will mention only the process as it is listed on Meta. Uh, you can see that after uh, a few years of investigation by the foundation staff and later on when AFCOM was consulted, uh, a decision was made for Wikimedia Armenia to be subject to quite uh, strong and fast changes or uh, eventually it would face the recognition and not be funded anymore. So uh, that's the most extreme case of what can happen if an affiliate is not able to resolve a big conflict. However, in this case, the conflict was also quite big. If we are going into uh, smaller things, smaller conflicts, uh, we can uh, uh, give a warning to an affiliate, mention that, hey, you should uh, change the way your process works, you should change the way you operate. Uh, this is... Uh, this, let's, let's call it the lowest level of possible uh, intervention of AFCOM. Uh, it, it may be a recommendation, a direct recommendation of what the affiliate is supposed to do. It can be a guide in direction of what affiliate is supposed to do. Uh, but each time it's very case specific. Yeah, so it's I hard to say what happens when agreement is not met it, because it depends on what the affiliate is, what has happened, what has not happened. Yeah, I just want to add that it's not always the warning. Uh, because uh, most time we get, we're just giving the recommendation and the recommendation is working. Uh, currently, I don't remember the situation when uh, we not resolved or can't resolve the situation in the moment. We basically, like most of times, resolving this situation with good intention. And uh, we are not giving like just warning for everyone. Yeah, yeah it's... Yeah, it's working. Two microphones, please? Three? Three? Yes. One, two, three. Okay, now it's working. Uh, j just a little follow up. Uh, I was uh, I was just curious. What's the what's the strongest tool that Afcom has? What's the what's the atomic option the that, atomic. that you have? Just just for curiosity. 
The atomic option would be uh, de-recognizing the affiliate, removing its trademark, and stop being found, stop funding it by the Wikimedia Foundation. Ah, okay. Thank you very much for the answer. But it's never happened. I just remind you all because uh, we are here to like resolve the issue uh, with the discussion, with the giving the recommendation. Like our intent is not to recognize everyone in the moment. Our intent is to just give you advice and uh, to like contribute to your development. Yeah. Yes, and. And, and also, uh, we are not controlling the funding issue because funding is up to the Wikimedia Foundation community resource team. We are just, we have no power to stop the funding of the affiliates. Yes, and to add one thing here, uh, the, the topic of the slide may be a bit misleading. We do not like to think of it as conflict intervention, more uh, actually the name of the committee is conflict resolution because AFCON can also be called by the affiliate to help with something. So please do not think of it as a police that is coming to check if everything is do, being done right. But if an affiliate itself thinks they have a problem with membership system or if they have a problem with, with anything, basically, they can also themselves reach out to AFCOM and ask for help from the affiliate committee, from the supporting staff, uh, from the foundation. Yeah, so, but, yeah. but basically we are intervening, like that's called intervention because they are asked to intervene in this. We are not just like uh, hearing if there's something happening, uh, so it's our job, so we can intervene. They are asking us, not we are giving, going to them. Robert? Uh, I'd like to ask uh, a bit about statistics, because I read on the Afcom Meta Wiki page that uh, Afcom is currently managing six, act uh, six active conflicts, and how many uh, conflict intervention uh, requests uh, is coming to you every year? Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, like f per year, we are receiving mm, two or three cases, uh, but the uh, rate of the resolving the issue is more higher, because if, the, uh, if we not resolve the issues, there will be more active cases. Yeah. And, and to add to this is, uh, my mentioned two, three, uh, those are the cases that AFCOM actually accepts because we also receive many yeah. emails, requests uh, from the affiliates, from the community that AFCOM decides not to undertake, sometimes because they are not within our mandate. Uh, somebody is coming with us to something that could be much better dealt by just a mediation within the affiliate or a labor dispute that is not within AFCOM's power, not within AFCOM's charter to actually uh, do this sort of work. So the actual caseload, I would say we receive more than one a month, but yeah. like 20% of it is actually yeah. brought to AFCOM for the full process. Yeah, we can't provide the average, uh, but I just want to say that before the pandemic, there are less uh, like uh, cases to come us, but after the pandemic, it's increased. But uh, yeah, we can't give any average number. Sure, it. thanks. Yeah. Uh, and, ha and, and I understand that uh, uh, a typical conflict intervention lasts uh, over a year or, uh, or even more, yeah? That would depend. <coughs> Sorry, that, that would depend. There were cases in AFCOM that could be res uh, with, uh, with AFCOM conflict intervention that could have been resolved by a couple emails, maybe a meeting. Uh, but that depends on how complicated the case actually is. Some of them, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, took three, four years to complete because of the advancement. Once again, I would direct you to, uh, you can see quite well uh, on Meta a notice about the Wikimedia Armenia case from three years ago. It has quite a good timeline of what happened where. If I am correct now, the investigation first started in 2016. It uh, ended well, up we in. Can't provide any uh, like uh, internal information. No, but that's on Meta. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, read on Meta. So uh, I just want to uh, share that uh, this uh, why it's so extensive. So uh, not everything depends on us because when we're sending the communication to the like part like conflict part, uh, we're waiting their response. Sometimes it takes from their side like month or three months, and it's not depend on us. But we have set a timeline. There is timeline, and after this timeline, if there is no response or no anything, we are just archiving this case, and that's it. 
it's up not yeah. just the conflict side but also the recognition side because we are working with the uh, chapter yeah. applications yeah. and just we are sending them email that you need to fix this in your bylaw and we are waiting like for a long time like six months and after the some time we are of course archiving this I hope this answered the question. Uh, uh, give them the microphone because she wants to translate, I guess. Yeah. Merci. Okay, bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everyone. Je suis Dominique Eliane et I, je suis de Wikifranca. I am Dominique Eliane and I am from Wikifranca. Qui est la collaboration, le hub de collaboration des francophones. It's the collaboration hub for, for the francophone communities. OK. J'ai deux questions. La première question, quelle est la collaboration entre l'AFCOM et les différents hubs? I have two questions. The first question is, what is the collaboration between AFCOM and the different hubs? Pour l'attribution des affiliations. For the uh, affiliation recognition. Alors, je pose cette question parce que l'année dernière, j'ai été présidente du comité euh, d'administration de Wikifranca. I'm asking this question because last year I was the uh, the president for uh, uh, the, the head. No, sorry, the, the chair. Of, I'm translating the chair of the board for Wikifranca. Okay, et nous avons été confrontés à une difficulté. And we have met uh, difficulties. On travaillait. À, on a plusieurs pays francophones qui sont affiliés au hub Wikifranca. We have many uh, different uh, countries that are affiliated to the hub Wikifranca. Et il y a le Togo, qui est un pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, qui est aussi affilié à Wikifranca, mais le comité était en train de travailler à avoir son affiliation. And so Togo, uh, who is, uh, which is a, a country that was seeking affiliation with Wikifranca, was also seeking affiliation. Well, we helped them seeking affiliation from the AFCOM. Alors, il y a un groupe de Wikimédiens que nous, en tant que Wikifranca, on connaissait et qui sont très actifs dans la communauté francophone et qui travaillent beaucoup. So we have one group of Wikimedians that we've known for, for a while and that are very active in the francophone community. Et c'est ce groupe qui est en train de faire la demande d'affiliation pour créer le user group du Togo. And that's the group that was uh, asking for affiliation uh, to AFCOM. To be the user group of Togo. Et à côté de ce groupe, il y a des personnes inconnues, enfin que nous on connaissait pas, que le comité, que le l'équipe de Wikimédia togolais ne connaissait pas. And uh, aside from these people, there are other people uh, who we didn't know about at all, and the, the active Wikimedians in Togo didn't know. Et c'est ce groupe là, on ne sait pas par quelle magie, qui a fait une demande d'affiliation à l'Afcom. And this group has uh, asked for uh, uh, AFCOM recognition. <laughs> I, have to, I have to translate this. A bit by magic that they uh, asked uh, AFCOM for recognition. Voilà. Et ils ont eu l'affiliation en tant que user group du Togo. And they had the affiliation. They received affiliation in, uh, as a user group of Togo. Donc ils étaient censés être le user group principal du pays alors que l'équipe que Wikifranca connaissait était aussi en train de faire sa demande d'affiliation. And they became the the main kind of representative of of Togo while uh, the people that we were working with and uh, knew uh, were trying to do their recognition process as well. Ça a donc bloqué le processus de demande d'affiliation du groupe que nous en tant que Wikifranca on connaissait so et donc ils n'arrivaient plus à faire les démarches. Et l'autre groupe qui a reçu l'affiliation refusait carrément de travailler avec eux euh, en tant que Wikipédien. Donc, ça, c'était vraiment compliqué pour nous, en tant que hub, de pouvoir les aider à travailler ou les départager. Enfin, c'était vraiment une situation assez compliquée. Mm. So what happened is that uh, basically uh, the two groups kind of came in conflict and uh, the recognized by AFCOM uh, refused to work with the people we knew and we were working with and it just kind of came to a standstill and made it very complicated to work together as Wikimedians. C'est pour cela que je pose cette question. And that's why I'm asking this question. Est-ce que pour attribuer l'affiliation à un groupe de personnes ou à une communauté 
Est-ce que l'AFCOM a la possibilité de ne serait-ce que demander, par exemple, au hub ou travailler avec les hubs pour savoir si ce sont des communautés reconnues ou euh, c'est vraiment des... Je n'ai pas envie de dire des profiteurs, mais des gens qui euh, s'amusent à... So the question is, can AFCOM work with hubs? Uh, and this is me, Delphine, adding, and anyone really in the region or anyone who knows uh, people who are active in a certain uh, community, uh, can AFCOM work with, uh, uh, with the hubs to actually understand uh, the dynamics of the communities on, on the ground? Uh, and how can we do that better? J'ai un peu triché là sur la fin, mais j'espère que ça va. Uh, thank you for this, and thank you, Delphine, for the translation. Uh, yeah, we are aware about this situation, and I just want to share that we already fixed this issue in the Togo. Uh, but I, uh, once again, I will explain how uh, the works, uh, the recognition uh, process. We are receiving the application from the region, uh, from the user group, and uh, we are setting a uh, like review process based on this uh, application. Unfortunately, we have no, uh, like, until now, no like, power to go and uh, investigate all the issues uh, on the local level. Uh, that's why we are working just through the application. Uh, and uh, after the strategy process, uh, now it's changed. Now we have the inter like interview process with the uh, applicants. And also, during the uh, review process, we're also asking the neighboring, uh, like let's say, affiliates in the region, or uh, if uh, there are any other like, uh, affiliates uh, within the country, we are asking them to provide some uh, insights or some uh, like, uh, ideas about the applicants. And if there is no issue, or uh, sometimes we are not receiving any answers from the uh, like neighboring countries' affiliates or from uh, different uh, groups, Uh, and we are limited with our capacity to intervene in this process. Uh, and based on the application, we are recognizing them. But as I said, it's all changed now. We have more extensive review process, uh, including the interview. And uh, this will be uh, fixed very soon, all the like issues. But for the Togo, uh, we received this complaint, and we already fixed this issue. Uh, for the hubs, uh, well, we are working, we are our charter, and our charter unfortunately does say that you need to intervene in hubs case. Or, But uh, we, of course, open to collaborate with hubs too and uh, get their ideas during the uh, review process or recognition process. Thank you. Any questions? That was great if there is no question and everyone get it. Like get it out I get get it out. Point. Um, and then, mm, yes, hello. I would like to have a question. So I'm coming from the LB Wikipedia, which is not yet recognized as user group. And my question is which are the best arguments to convince the other Wikipedians in my country? to join and uh, to apply for a user group. Uh, sorry, I, which <coughs> Wikipedia? Uh, LB, Luxembourg. Ah, Luxembourg, OK. Uh, well, there is many benefits to become the organized, let's say, affiliate. Because uh, then, uh, like, let me uh, point out the bullet point here. Uh, if you become the organized uh, community, uh, you'll receive, for example, permission to use Wikimedia Foundation trademarks. 
including the logos, uh, Wikipedia logos, and etc. Uh, you have a chance to apply for the funding, but individually you also can do that. But if you will be organized user group, uh, there will be more benefits to apply for the funding from the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that will be the big plus uh, to be become the affiliate in the country is that you can communicate as a well-organized organization with your government institution, with the, for example, with the libraries, if you want some collaboration with them, uh, with the museums and etc. It's very help you. Uh, I know how it works because uh, my community is Georgia, uh, will not very well organized before, let's say, 2019. and. Uh, like if some agencies want to collaborate with us, they are like just searching the people in Facebook to find uh, to collaborate with Wikipedia. But when we become the uh, well-organized organization, uh, now they know uh, who is responsible for this. So like communication with the agencies, with the different organization, it's big plus. And also, if you will be like uh, affiliates, there is one big plus too. You can join, for example, regional hub. Uh, it's not the hub, but uh, regional non-profit, Wikimedia Europe, who works on legislative uh, initiatives within the EU institutions. Uh, you have benefit from this too. <coughs> and there is uh, many fundings uh, for the GLAM and for the uh, education uh, from the <coughs> EU institutions. And you can apply for with your organization to that fundings too. It just apply for the Luxembourg. Now, can you someone give the mic to Natalia? Ah. I'm also here. Hi. Ah. Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Anna. I'm from Wiki Editores LX. We are, um, and st still, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> I can see by your face that you know who we are. Um, so we, mm, we actually, I think we want to just sim give some feedback on how we felt. So for everyone, for context, we just applied recently for recognition. It was denied this year. It was denied. And uh, I guess we want to take this space very constructively just to give a feedback on how it was the process for us. And we felt that uh, we needed some more, maybe more interaction, actually to understand the decision. Um, I know you talked about an, interv an interview now, and I imagine, I mean, you all have a voluntary work, so we know you're overburdened most of the time. But we felt on our side that we gave a very clear explanation how we operate with other affiliates in the region. We have a very good relationship with them. We talked with them. They all both said that they gave their they are partners, yeah, we work with them very clearly. We felt that we had explained that in a very thorough way when we said all the activities we had done together. And then um, we really couldn't understand what happened on the process decision. So maybe, yeah, there wasn't an interview. So maybe having this kind of more um, direct communication would have helped us to understand both the decision, but also how to move forward from that, you know? So, I don't know if you want to add something. Hi, Mehman. <laughs> I think the main question is how we can move forward, because I imagine it's um, something that happens to have this denied for the first time. Uh, I understand you guys have been through a lot of changes, the process are changing, and we apply exactly in the middle of this change. But the question, I think, I, I mean, there is the feedback, but also the question, how should we proceed from now? And one of the things that the, the response that they gave to us was that we should create a, um, a plan of how we're going to interact with our chapter and the other affiliate in our language. And I think it's fine, but we are also, I understand there's nothing to do with our grant, but we create a strategic plan to have our annual grant. And we're doing this for the second year. Next year, we're going to do it again. So I wonder if this is not a lot to ask, because to create a strategic plan, um, it's a huge thing for a small group. And um, in our strategic plan, we include our partnership 
with our chapter, with Wikimedia Portugal, also with Wikimovimento Brasil, and other groups that we collaborate, because uh, we collaborate in other languages, other affiliates. Uh, I also work with Art and Feminism, so we are always... Com we have a lot of partners. So for us, that was shocking, because we have a lot of partners in the movement, because we have a good relationship, um, we felt that wasn't translated, and the question is, how can we do that? How can we show that to the AFCOM without having to create another plan only for the, the AFCOM if we already do this for the strategic plan? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Natalia. I know. Uh, just, I just give them a quick uh, answer. Uh, we know, I hear you, and not just me, but AFCOM hears you. We know that communication for the years is not as strong. Uh, a lot, let's say, skill of the uh, affiliations committee, but we are volunteers. We have our own life too, uh, but we are mm, trying to be more transparent and give more feedbacks from our side. And I know that uh, sometimes uh, our decision or our feedback is not well designed, let's say, and we are just sending the template uh, answer for that. Uh, but we are improving this process, and after the strategy process, there will be well uh, developed and more improved and you will receive more uh, like context about your application uh, and also there is something what's apply for you for example some it's not a, I'm, I'm not talking about directly to your application but sometimes we're receiving the some application and we as a volunteers can't understand for example it's in some our languages and without the translation uh, it's also an issue for us because uh, uh, our capacity is limited uh, but we are trying our best. Uh, and for the strategic plan, for example, we are not asking to you provide the three years uh, well-developed, well-designed strategic plan. Uh, you are, have partnership, you have some projects. We just want uh, to know more about this partnership, more about this project. Because when we are just evaluating your application, uh, for us it's just small text without background. And for sometimes we need more background from your work because there are similar thematic uh, organization especially a spanish language in your region uh, that's why we need to like uh, draw the border between these thematic groups that's why we need more background from this but as, as i said we are developing developing new plan we are uh, let's say uh, improving our processes and it will be more open and transparent uh, for for you uh, in near future uh, I know that it's not the best answer for now, but uh, <laughs> after the new processes, you will, uh, you have a chance to apply once again uh, to the recognition, to the feedback. Yeah, it, that's it. Because, sorry, just to have, because th that's exactly the point. We, are, have, we have the overlap of gender and language. And I guess there's, that's the issue, right? Because I would mm -hmm. argue not directly an issue, but uh, sometimes we need more information from you, uh, how your work uh, is different than their work. That's the point. But when there is an overlap, that means that we funnel our work. Um, uh, we will never work on Spanish language because we work in a whole different project, which is the Portuguese Wikimedia. You yeah, understand? I know, but uh, they're not blocking. And overlap issue is not blo blocking point here. We still we have the power to recognize you or de not recognize you. Uh, no one is blocking your application. Okay. And uh, the affiliation committee also not blocking this. We just need more information from you at this point. That's the point. But yeah, this is the specified one. And uh, as I said, you have a chance to apply once again for recognition with new uh, criteria, with new processes, and things can change. Thank you. For your help, Natalia. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. So um, affiliates, or as organizations, as just tools, you you may think that your community need an organization, and that requires some work to do that. But if you cannot find people with whom you want to organize, just convincing people, you know. I mean, it, it, it might not be worth it. You need to look at what your community needs. 
uh, look at what are the pros and cons of having it as an organization, because if you are starting to create an institution, you need more people who actually want to do that, because if you are going to be a one-person organization, that's not going to work out. You're just going to burn out yourself, and it's not going to bring you. There are a lot of things that you as an individual can do. You can receive grants, you can receive even trademark uh, permissions for some events or things. You can do a lot of things as a one person. Once you are also an organization, there is also bureaucracy and there is also some other complexities that might not be worth it. Main thing is, do not feel that you have to have an organization. There are a lot of other opportunities to do things that you want just as a community member. Yeah, and unfortunately, Afghan can't uh, help you to find the people. Yeah, uh, I guess we're done on time. Uh, ah, what? Oh, sorry. I, I think this is just a comment. So my name is Delfina, uh, an advisor to the AFCOM. Um, and I happen to be also the founder of the AFCOM a very, very, very long time ago, before it became AFCOM. Um, so to, to, your, to your problem, I think that this shows how uh, Wikimedia as a whole, as a deficit in communication altogether because if you receive grants and then AFCOM doesn't recognize you, there's kind of a, a double standard in recognition. So I want to acknowledge that. <coughs> and I think that um, uh, uh, in, in some cases, I also think that maybe having uh, more diversity in the AFCOM, there are very few women on the AFCOM is another thing. So something to think about. Um, and yes, I just wanted to like acknowledge that uh, uh, yes, there is a deficit there, and that we should be working on it uh, uh, more uh, better. I hope, as uh, Mehman said, that the new rules, etc., will make it easier for you to reapply and then to get the recognition that other people have given you in the movement. So uh, I think that that makes sense. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, and we are on time. Uh, thank you, everyone, to join us for your questions. Uh, you know our. Uh, where, you, where can you find us? Uh, if you have any <laughs> our questions, you can just send us email and be sure that our, we are improving our communication skills and we will get back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.